Hey guys, in this video I'll talk about some related rates problems. Uh, some of these are probably easier than what you'd expect to see on the test. Some are about at par, but let's get started. So here we have a related rates problem where there's an, a circular oil slick that as time goes on gets larger and larger. So let's look at the animation. And as you can see, as time goes on, the radius gets larger and the dash line is a moment in time, a snapshot in time, when the radius is exactly 25 feet. So we can get close to that. I guess I can get to exactly 25, but you get the idea. Exactly at the moment that this is 25 feet, uh, 25 meters rather, something needs to happen. We're trying to figure out what exactly is happening with this question, uh, or with the area of the oil slick rather, when the radius is exactly 25 meters. And here's a graph of it, the area as a function of radius, not as a function of time. So as the radius grows, so does the area. So the setup of the question is that the radius of a circular oil, sl oil slick expands at a rate of two meters per minute. How fast is the area of the oil slick increasing when the radius is 25 meters? So let's take a look at this. Uh, we're given this ideal setup of, uh, let me change that, all right. So we're given this ideal setup of this perfect circle where the radius is R units. We're given that dr dt, the rate of change of radius with respect to time is two meters per minute. And we're asked to find how fast is the area changing or the rate of change of area with respect to time when the radius is exactly 25 meters. So at that instant, what exactly is happening? So we start with the area of the circle. Uh, this is again an equation that you should memorize and commit to memory. Area is pi r squared. And if we're looking for dA dt, that means we need to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So doing that, we get that d dt of a would just be dA dt equals the derivative of pi times r squared would be pi times two r or two pi r. And then because these letters don't match, r is a function of time that's implicitly defined. As time changes, the radius changes as well. We know that this will be multiplied by dr dt. And at this stage, we can evaluate this derivative when r is 25. This is the right notation for that. And say that, well, it's just 2 pi, and that's the constant, times the radius, which is 25, times dr dt, the rate at which the radius is changing with respect to time, that's just two. So cleaning this up, we get 100 pi. And to interpret this result, we can write a sentence that reads, when the radius is 25 meters, the area of the oil slick is increasing, increasing indicated by the fact that this is a positive number, at 100, meter, 100 pi meters squared per minute. Uh, unit analysis tells us that this is probably a unit of area because of square units and then per time, so meter squared per minute, per minute, indicates that it's a rate of change of area with respect to time. Let's look at part two of the question. If the radius is zero at time t equals zero, how fast is the area increasing after three minutes? So here, we were given that dr dt was two meters per minute. If three minutes have passed, well, actually, let's understand what this rate actually means. This means that for every minute that passes, the radius will increase by two meters. So in the first minute, the radius increases by two. In the second minute, the radius increases by two, but for a total of four. In the third minute, the radius increases by two again for a total of six meters. So after three minutes, whatever your starting radius was, six meters have been added to it. So we were told that since the radius was zero meters at time t equals zero, if three minutes have passed and we add six meters to this radius, well, the radius is exactly six meters. So if we wanna find the rate of change of area with respect to time at the time that the radius is six meters, well, we, we take the same thing that we found in 1.1 and we plug in the numbers, two pi times the radius, which is six, times dr dt, which is two, Cleaning that up gives us 24 pi. So there's two ways to write this sentence. You can either say when the radius is six meters, 
an equivalent statement would be at three minutes or at t equals three minutes the area is increasing at 24 meters 24 pi meters squared per minute let's look at the next question this is also a very 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 standard falling ladder problem there's a wall or a building or a house and then there's a ladder that's propped up against it with all these questions you can assume that the ground level is perfectly horizontal and that the building or the wall is perfectly vertical. So that indicates that there's a right angle triangle to be made, which says, hey, if you have a right angle triangle, uh, either trigonometric functions are going to be used or it's going to be the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, in this case, we'll see that there are no angles justified or specified, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So here, we're given that there's a 16 foot ladder and it leans against the wall. And you can push it up against the wall and you can see, yep, 16 feet. And if we lay it completely flat, pull it all the way back, we see that it's 16 feet as well. So if we push it up against the wall, maybe something like that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, so first question is, if the bottom of the ladder moves away from the wall at a constant rate, we don't know what this rate is. All we're told is that it's a constant rate. And if it's moved away from the wall, it'll be in this direction. So the positive x-axis. How would you describe the movement of the top of the ladder? So here, again, same picture. I'm describing this distance as x, this distance as h. The z, which is, say, the hypotenuse of the right triangle, we know is 16 feet. So we're given that z is 16 feet. That's a constant dx dt is some constant i'm going to call that a nothing special about a you call it pqr as long as the letter is not used in the problem you can say a is my constant at which the ladder is being pulled to the right and because it's being pulled to the right i know that it's going to be some positive real number so uh, you can either write a is a positive real number or you can write this in shorthand notation. This means A belongs to the set of positive real numbers. R with a plus up, up top indicates A is an element of the positive reals. And the relationship we have to exploit here or use or reuse over and over again is again, the Pythagorean theorem gives us the square, the sum of the square of the two legs is equal to the sum, the square of the hypotenuse. So if we differentiate this relationship with respect to time, we get 2x dx dt plus 2h dh dt plus uh, or equals 0, because the derivative of 16 squared would just be 0. Now, we were told that dx dt is some constant. We call it a for that matter. So 2 times x times a plus 2h, d, 2H dh dt is equal to 0. And we're looking to isolate dh dt. So you can subtract the 2ax over to the other side and then divide by the 2h. Once you've done that, the 2s will cancel out and you're left behind with dh dt equals negative ax over h. So what have we found? What does this mean? It, this means that if the bottom of the ladder moves away from the wall at a constant rate, a feet per second. Again, we don't know what a is and we don't quite care. It's some positive real number. The top of the ladder is moving down. Now notice that moving down is what indicates the negative sign. At, now here, no negative sign. If you put a negative here, you end up losing the, the points for the interpretation. So it's moving down at ax over h feet per second when the base of the ladder is x feet away from the wall and the top of the ladder is h feet off the ground. So again, these letters are just referencing what these variables are, x and h. The second question is relatively simple. If h, or sorry, if x is increasing, uh, oops, right there. If x is increasing, is dh dt positive or is it negative? And then they just tell you that x is the distance that's a horizontal distance and h is the vertical distance. So this is rather simple. If x is increasing, dh dt will be negative as the top of the ladder is moving in the negative y direction. So if I pull the ladder this way, the top of the ladder will go down. 
And because it's going in the negative y direction, we know that dh dt will be some negative number because it's being pulled down instead of being pushed up. Looking back here, suppose that the bottom of the ladder is five feet from the wall. So if the bottom of the ladder is somewhere there, at time t equals zero. So this is in contrast with the previous problem where the radius was five. Here, at the start of the experiment, the ladder is already at t equals five. Uh, x equals five, sorry. And we're told that it slides away from the wall at a constant rate of three feet per second. So instead of it being just some constant rate, we're told that it exactly is three feet per second. Find the velocity of the top of the ladder at time t equals one. So in this case, as we pull this to the right, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? That's what the question is asking us. So here we have our own, uh, the, the same picture again, although we're given that this distance at the start of the experiment exactly is five feet. And we're pulling the ladder to the right at three feet per second. And then there's a compensatory drop in the top of the ladder against the wall. Now, understanding what this rate actually means is the key to this problem. So this means that for every second that passes, three we move the base of the ladder three feet to the right. So if this is at time t equals zero, one second later, we must have pushed the ladder three feet to the right. So at t equals one, once one second has passed, we see that the base of the ladder is no longer just five feet away, it's actually eight feet away. And it's still being pulled to the right, but in that instant, it's exactly at eight feet from the wall. And we notice that h has lowered, or h has reduced in, in dimension. Now, if we know two sides of a right triangle, we can use and leverage Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the third side is. So that's done off to the side here. h turns out to be square root of 16 squared minus eight squared. Now, instead of reinventing the wheel, we can use or reuse what we found in 2.1. We found that dh dt was negative ax over h. Now, a is being given to us now as three feet per second, so I can replace a with that number. x exactly is the distance between the wall and the, the base of the ladder, so that's eight. Over h, which we found right here, is root 16 squared minus eight squared. Now, for my exam and for the AP exam, please stop right here and put units at the end, so feet per second. For the sake of completeness and to satisfy some curious minds, I did take it all the way to the end, but please note that if this is done incorrectly, you will lose points. So it's not, there, there's no benefit to doing it. This is a perfectly good answer. Just write the units down and that's it. For a multiple choice question, you will have to go all the way to the end. So that's why I did it for that. But for free response, please know when to stop. So once uh, the idea or the, the simple mantra is, if you can plug the expression you have on your paper into a calculator, you can stop. This is not something I can plug into a machine, although this is. So this is a good stopping point. This is not. Uh, that being said, once we get our answer, we can interpret it. We can say that at t equals 1, the top of the ladder is sliding down. So sliding down means the negative sign at 3 over root 3 feet per second. No need to rationalize denominators. Again, if the multiple choice question says 3 root 3 over 3 or root uh, 3, you can understand that that's where the simplification is coming from. Free response, stop right here. Multiple choice, you have to get to whatever the answer choices are. Let's look at 2.4. 2 2.4 2 says, suppose the top of the ladder slides down at a constant rate of four feet per second. So now, unlike the previous questions, we're not told what the rate of moving to the right is. We're being told at what rate the ladder is sliding down. And we're asked to calculate dx dt. So what is, if we know what the rate of this sliding down is, what is the rate of this moving to the right? When h is 12. So coming back here, we know that in this picture now, this distance is 12 at that instant. 
So if this is 12 and this is 16, we can find out what x is. We can find the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. We also know that this side of the ladder is declining or descending at 4 feet per second, indicated by the negative sign. And we're asked that when this is 12 feet, how fast is this moving to the right? So again, we start with our uh, given uh, relationship, x squared plus h squared equals 16 squared. If we differentiate both sides with respect to time, we get the same expression we had earlier, 2x dx dt plus 2h dh dt equals 0. You could have just said from 2.1 we have this. You did not have to do this again. I did it, and only after I, I sort of finished the problem, I realized that I didn't have to do this again. So by all means, feel free to reuse stuff that you've done in past uh, parts of the same question. 2 comes along for the right. The x value at this instant we found right here was square root of 16 squared minus 12 squared. So that goes there. Times dx dt. This is the unknown. This is what we're trying to solve for. So it stays there. Plus 2 times h. h was given at this moment to be 12. Times dh dt. The ladder sliding down at 4 feet per second, so negative 4. And then finally, you can simplify dx dt. Uh, you can clean this up, and you'd end up with 24 over root 7, or 24 root 7 over 7 feet per second. Multiple choice, go all the way to the end, or go to whatever the answer choices are. Free response, you can stop right here. And then just make sure you're including units. So dx dt would be 20. 96 over 2 square root of 16 squared minus 12 squared feet per second. And an interpretation of the answer would be when h is 12 feet, the foot of the ladder is moving right, moving right would indicate the positive sign, at 24 over root 7 feet per second. You could have also written this feet per second and you'd get full credit. Let's look at the third question. So this is the standard conical tank, water is flowing into it, or water might be leaking out once the tank is full. Uh, both have been seen. So let's take a look at this now. I want you to pay attention to how quickly the water level rises at the beginning versus how quickly it rises once the water gets fairly high. So you can see that it's starting to slow down. Reason for that is when you start pulling in the water, it doesn't have any room to go sideways, so the only direction it can go is up. However, once you get to maybe this level, it has a lot more room to go sideways. So the rate of change of it in the horizontal direction increases, and the rate of change of it going in the upward direction actually decreases as time goes on. So again, you can see that the water level is rising very slowly. But it does so in a dramatic fashion at the beginning, and then it continues to go up slowly. Now you'll notice later on in the question, we're told that the height of the cone is 10 feet, the radius of the cone is 4 feet, but hopefully you're starting to see the similar triangles being observed here. So you'll have ratios of the radius of the water level over the height of the water level will equal 4, which is the radius of the cone, over 10, which is the height of the cone. So setup is pretty simple. The water is pouring into the tank at a constant rate of 10 feet cube per minute. So if we just look at the units, that should tell us what exactly this is the rate of change of. Feet cubed is a unit of volume. The cubic units are, are typically going to be volume. Per minute means per unit of time. So this we will say is dv dt, the derivative of volume with respect to time, or the rate of change of volume with respect to time. And the question is asking us, how fast is the water level rising when it is 5 feet high? So at the moment that it is 5 feet high, what is dh dt? How fast is the water level rising? And hopefully you understand that it's rising at a different rate, because at the very beginning, it's rising very, very quickly. Then it kind of slows down, and it doesn't rise nearly as quickly. So now that we have that in our minds, let's see if we can analyze it. So here's the conical tank. There's a water level exactly at 5 feet. And here are the similar triangles that I was talking about. And from this, you can create a, uh, a relationship between the ratios. The radius over the height equals the radius 
over the height. So this gives us 4 over 10 equals r over h. You'll notice in a few minutes why we're solving for r and not for h. Let's look at our other givens. We're given that dv dt is positive 10 feet cubed per minute because the water is flowing in. Now, if you were given a question where the water was leaking out of the cone uh, because there's a small hole at the bottom or maybe there's a faucet that you open and then the water is coming out of it, uh, that would be a negative rate because the volume is going down as opposed to going up. We're given that the height of the cone is 10 feet and that the radius of the cone is 4 feet. So the volume of the cone, we know that this formula should be memorized, is 1 3rd pi r squared h. 1 3rd pi is a constant. Now you'll notice that in order to find dh dt, we have to differentiate a function with respect to h, uh, with respect to time, but the variable needs to be h. So we have no room for r's here. Hopefully now you understand why I needed to get r by itself so I can make a substitution. So if we multiply h over to the other side, we get r is equal to 4h over 10, and we can reduce this fraction to get 2h over 5. So that results in this r getting swapped out for 2h over 5. We're squaring it because r is squared times h. If you clean this up, you end up with the volume of the cone depending on just the height of the water. Uh, sorry, not the volume of the cone, but the volume of the water inside the cone, which will also have the shape of a cone, uh, depending on just the height of the water column. And the formula is 4 pi over 75 h cubed. Now this can be differentiated with respect to time. And if we do that, we get dv dt on the left-hand side. And uh, 4 pi over 75 is a constant, so we can just hold on to it. Derivative of h cubed will be 3h squared. The 3 that's brought down will simplify the 75 and get 4 pi over 25 h squared dh dt. Because h and t are not the same variable, we know that h is an implicitly defined function of time. As time goes on, so does the height changes as well. Now at this stage, we can just plug in numbers. So dv dt, we know the rate of change of volume is 10. Uh, constants come along. h, we were told, was 5, 5 feet. And then dh dt is the unknown rate. That's what we're trying to find. So if you solve for dh dt, we end up with 10 over 4 pi feet per minute. And this is what we're looking for to interpret our answer. We can write, when the height of the water is 5 feet, the level of the water is rising at 10 over 4 pi feet per minute. So at that instant, or at that moment, the level of the water is going up at 10 over 4 pi feet per minute. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll make another video for the next three questions. Hopefully this helps.